Welcome to Peralta Matters. I'm your host, Jay Calhoun. Today we're going to talk about sustainability. And my first guest is Jack Lynn, organizer of sustainability at Peralta Colleges. How are you, Jack? I'm well, thank you. Great, great. Let's start the discussion off with exactly what a sustainable, sustainability organizer or coordinator does. Well, my role here as a sustainability organizer is to put together the best thinking of the faculty and students and the administrators to move the f uh, colleges and the district forward okay. um, in a green way, and that means green in three different things. One is the curriculum. Mm -hmm. As an educational institution, uh, our mission is to teach, right. and as you know, with Al Gore's um, film uh, back in 2001 yes, about yes. Uh, Inconvenient cool. Truth, yeah. that set off a whole national dialogue about sustainability, energy, and, mm. and it was a hot topic for mm -hmm. about 10 years. And so um, now it's become a regular topic. And yeah. as you hear about uh, climate change more and more, right. and um, uh, like you know, here in Oakland, we've got a, a big local foods movement, things yes. like that. So yes. this is on people's minds. And the more we can uh, give each student a taste of what the dialogue is about mm -hmm. and show them this is what the, what the conversation is like and mm -hmm. the things that people are thinking about, then they become uh, more aware um, as they uh, go out into you know, their work lives or into yeah. their daily lives about yeah. uh, green stuff. The second way this happens is in facilities. So okay. um, you know, we've got uh, five sites and uh, our PG&E bill is about <laughs> two and a half million dollars a year. Jeez. So there's, that's a big opportunity for us to save some money if we yes. can um, put solar systems onto our buildings. If we can save some water, if we could lower the amount of gas we use to heat our buildings, then mm. um, we could offset a lot of that and um, you know, use some of that money. Instead of paying PG&E, we right. could get more teachers and pay for more programs. Exactly. Yeah. That's what they all want to hear right about now, right. too. Uh, we talked a little bit about off-camera about not only California leading the country or the nation in green energy, so to speak, or sustainable mm -hmm. programs, but yeah. Uh, in particular, the standards in which these sustainable programs are implemented, right. uh, in particular LEED, and mm -hmm. that's the one that, that we've chosen. Talk a little bit about LEED, one, what it means, and, and yeah. why is it a standard? Well, back in uh, 2007, the Board of Trustees adopted a sustainability policy, and part of that policy was to say, from now on, all of our buildings, all of our new buildings will mm -hmm. be built to a green standard, and that right. green standard is, is measured by this system called LEED. Uh, LEED is uh, developed by what's called the U.S. Green Building Council. It's okay. a nation nationwide and now international um, mm. organization of uh, contractors, architects, wow. uh, designers, uh, anybody in uh, involved in putting up new buildings. Um, okay. They put their heads together and thought, well, how do we measure the greenness of a new building? Gotcha. And so there's everything from energy efficiency, water efficiency, mm -hmm. um, where it's located, are you near public transit, do you have uh, facilities for people to park their bikes and then shower and change and right. uh, so there's uh, or do you use paints that have lead in it or not or gotcha. um, how much do your carpets smell because uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of chemicals that happen in carpets and you know right. uh, car the carpet industry has really figured out how to remove those things called volatile yeah. organic yeah. compounds so that's a measure of greenness and all this stuff so the board looked at that system and, and said yeah it's a pretty good system to adopt from now on all of our new buildings will meet at least the silver level of qualification that means it's not the most, it won't be like the most basic green building, right. but it's, it's a good green building. Gotcha. And then there's uh, gold and platinum levels above that, gotcha. uh, which are kind of hard and expensive to attain. But right. uh, you know, silver is a pretty good system. And the other yeah. thing they said was that uh, by 2017, that mm. every individual building on all the campuses will have what's called a operations and maintenance uh, certification. Uh, so that means that uh, things like the kind of paper we use. Are we using 100% right. recycled right. paper, which we are now? Excellent. And are we using chemicals that aren't too harmful for the human body? And so and that's green cleaning chemicals. And right. so all the custodians on every campus are using green cleaning chemicals. Yeah. Um, what else? We have uh, recycled content in our, um, uh, what, what should we call it? Paper towels. <laughs> gotcha. right. yeah, the the, the all-elusive term, right. paper towels. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so we have 100% recycled content in our paper towels, right. and that's all controlled through the purchasing department here. Right on. Um, and then there's things like the kind of computers we buy. Um, those have, uh, computers now have a, a greenness rating, so uh, can, those, can they turn themselves off? Do they have a power right. saving feature? And, uh, right. So Energy Star is, is also involved. Um, so it really infiltrates every level of operations and every level of thinking when we're planning for facilities and maintaining our facilities. Yeah, it, it touched on what we talked off camera a little bit about the fact that it's not just 
the putting the building up, but the operation of it, the daily operation right. of that building. Yeah. So the green doesn't just stop with we've achieved this level of, of putting the building exactly. up, but we have to continue it. Exactly. Um, and in doing that, I'm sure you have to stay current yes. and stay informed. So uh, we know that you have a conference coming up it's specifically right. related to Laney in particular. Talk a little bit about that. Right. Well, every year we have a conference and it's moved from campus to campus. Um, uh, the first, very first one happened in 05 at Laney, and then okay. we're coming back full circle. Right. Um, or maybe it was 06. I'm getting okay. stuff. It's <laughs> okay. been such a long it's time. It's been too long. Right. Um, but we used to do this thing where we'd bring in a bunch of uh, local experts and mm -hmm. speakers, and we'd have a full day affair of it, um, right. starting the morning with breakfast, and then our keynote, and then educational sessions, and we'd mm -hmm. have you know 300 people come in and, right. and hang out, and go to the sessions, get educated, and, right. and get excited about right. it. Uh, the co this conversation. Um, this year, because the budget situation, we don't have as much funding as we did, mm -hmm. and you know, frankly, all the, a lot of instructors are kind of are, are burned out about all the things that they have to do. So, right. we're having a more intimate affair. Um, the idea is to have each instructor. We're inviting each instructor to open up their classroom for just that day on April 28th. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if you're an English teacher. Um, maybe you've been uh, assigning some readings around sustainability or you've been thinking about how do you bring this into your classroom, well, this is a perfect opportunity for you. Uh, mm -hmm. You get to take that hour and uh, there's lots of people around the district who are thinking about this who can help uh, instructors do this mm -hmm. uh, to transform that one hour into a conversation about green or to show a movie or bring in a guest speaker mm -hmm. or uh, have a dialogue about it with the students or um, right. uh, it's, it's really open-ended. And that can happen throughout the day, and that's right. on uh, Thursday, April 28th. Um, in the middle of the day at Laney, the folks over there have decided to um, do this big celebration. Uh, so Scott Strong now at the Bistro, he's doing a fantastic job over there. I don't know if yeah. you've been there to eat. Yes, we have. Oh, it's so good. Yes. Um, uh, and you also notice that they, their uh, to-go containers are made out of exactly. a thing called PLA, yep, so it's not, it's not oil plastic, it's plant plastic that's huh. in the to-go containers. So Good that's to really know cool. that. Right that's right. Scott Strong over at the Bistro, he's, um, he's getting uh, local organic farmers to put up a display table. Uh, mm. the, his students, his culinary arts students, are going to be doing an appetizer competition. Oh, wow. You get to vote with you know, your meal tickets and where you, which um, green appetizer do you like the most. Yeah. And these are you know, delicious. Uh, local seasonal foods that the students will be making. Oh, uh, uh, these are you know, the, the graduating students uh, in mm, the culinary arts okay, programs. Okay. Uh, we'll have a jazz quartet out there. There'll be people cleaning up the estuary, people that are working in the garden. Um, uh -huh. And uh, the ceramics department, um, they've made these uh, handmade planters is really cute. You could, uh, in, there'll be potting soil, you can plant a thing and take it home with you as a, right as a souvenir. Right um, Chancellor Allen will be there to speak. Elnora Excellent. will say a few words. And, um, it's mostly just a, a kind of a fun midday get together that's got right. food and, and music and entertainment. Right and that's just at Laney, but we're inviting instructors at all the uh, campuses to okay. open up their classrooms th that day. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you are watching Peralta Matters here on Peralta TV. We are talking sustainability. Jack, I want to thank you for coming on the show, man. Thank it was an you. education. Pleasure to be here. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. come together and cook food to serve in the cafeteria upstairs. Learning by hand, you touch and doing, you don't learn from the book, you actually do it. And their main thing is learning customer service, how to deal with a customer. It's a nice environment, everybody's all cheerful, it makes things a lot more fun. We also have a baking side which does artesian breads, uh, plated desserts, and candies. We have a brand new facility that's opening up. A lot of people have seen it, and now they want to be in there working inside that kitchen. So we're trying to give the student a rounded tour of the culinary industry. And all around the Bay Area, basically, they're going to need uh, students who are graduating from our program to work in their restaurants. If you're really interested in cooking, this is the place to be.
Welcome back to Peralta Matters. I'm your host, Jay Calhoun. Continuing our conversation about sustainability, I am now joined by Robin Freeman, Coordinator of Environmental Management and Technology at Merritt College. Robin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great. Let's talk first about that title, <laughs> among others. Uh, as well as being the Coordinator of Environmental Management, you're also the Director of the Browser Dellums Institute um, at the Self-Reliant House on campus. Talk in totality about what all that means. Well, the environmental program uh, at Merritt is one of the oldest in the state. Um, uh, it started 49 years ago, and it's always been based on a very interdisciplinary, okay. kind of those broad, whole picture right. uh, point of view. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, David R. Brower, Ronald V. Dellums Institute for Sustainable Policy Studies, yes. uh, is a, a nonprofit research organization mm -hmm. that's hosted um, at uh, our environmental center, the Self Reliant mm -hmm. House, and uh, they. Institute advisors informed our curriculum, mm. and so the curriculum is uh, very broad. Gotcha. We include the whole picture, okay. and the research at the institute kind of looks at the uh, social picture of uh, the problem that is that we actually have all the solutions mm -hmm. to both environmental and social problems. Hmm. Uh, how come we don't institute them? At, at the level of right. the problem. Right. So, uh, and uh, one of the reasons is uh, oversimplified or over specialized education and right. also governing policies. Right. So, we struggle to keep a broad <laughs> <laughs> aspect, right. picture, which is good for the students because the field is uh, changing every six months. Mm. And so, uh, and it's huge, as I say, right. every job happens in the environment. Good and point. so, uh, and more and more of the industries and agencies and organizations are realizing that. Yeah. So they have an environmental aspect to whatever it is. Whatever they do. Hmm. And uh, so, uh, the, this program gives a student an opportunity to look across the spectrum mm. from waste management, air, environmental justice, water, right. Right. Uh, energy, yeah. shelter, food, everything, and decide uh, what their real passions and area hmm. of interest and, and how they can is and how right. they can use their own existing experience right. to, to add to that. So we've been able to successfully have a lot of students mm. find their way in jobs mm -hmm. and um, we don't uh, get caught in the trends because usually by right. the time the wheels of education have caught up with the trend <laughs> it's passed. Yes. yes. <laughs> so right. you've been trained for something very narrow right, right. and it's over with by the time you're out. Gotcha. So uh, we try not to set people up for that kind of disappointment. Which is an education in itself. Um, the, uh, the Self-Reliant House, built in 1982. Right. Give us a little bit of, one, why it's important as a model, and two, what was it created for? Well, it was originally conceived mm -hmm. by uh, my predecessor, Charles Ford, who okay. was actually a marine biologist, ah. and was with the program when it began in 1962 down in uh, uh, Martin Luther King in the old right. Grove Street old campus. Grocery campus right. yeah. And um, uh, they designed it as a conventional suburban house at that time, that like mm -hmm. the ones that were being built around there. Because in in the uh, early '80s, late '70s, mm -hmm. uh, what people were doing was called retrofitting. So they were right. taking an existing house and trying to make it Modernize, have less right. of, a, of a environmental impact, gotcha. uh, more you know gotcha. less energy use, gotcha. and so on. Uh, so that's what it looks like, and okay. it's built completely by students and maintained by students and staff. So we've got thousands and thousands wow. of hours of learning in it. Wow. And it now demonstrates uh, the, uh, a whole range of the kind of sustainability, green mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. opportunities, ranging from uh, our, our urban agroecology, okay. urban farming, so we grow fruits and vegetables, Excellent. and we have um, uh, gray water, 
which is just the water that comes out of your sink. Okay. Uh, we have a way of filtering that and using it. We have mm. uh, rainwater catchment, the water mm -hmm. that comes off of roofs. We have wow. a green roof, like the, the tiniest version of wow. what's at the wow. uh, Academy of Sciences. It's actually designed by the same wow. um, designer okay. who designed the Academy of Sciences. <laughs> Gotta love that. This is her smallest one. This is her smallest one. <laughs> this is her baby version. Right. Great. And uh, we have a straw bale uh, wall and earth a natural building we have um, uh, a green wall we also have wow. a, a museum quality uh, demonstration uh, trailer that was donated to us by the stop waste the Alameda wow. County Waste Management Authority uh, which was actually conceived at the very first green building materials event hmm. in the, wor in the in world, world which was I wow. mean which was at the self Line house and, was, and, and the last uh, <laughs> uh, two years ago, there were twelve thousand people turned up at it. Outstanding! And, uh, Outstanding! <laughs> not at our house. Right, but it's moved <laughs> way on since then. But anyway, so we have that uh, demonstration, right. and um, we uh, uh, look at urban lumber use and uh, and uh, materials reuse and recycling, mm -hmm. and so and the green building materials yeah. inside and. Uh, uh, also, uh, we have an ecological restoration site all around right. the building. That's great. That's great. We talked a little off camera about um, 200 years ago, we weren't so much dedicated to cities. Now right. we are. Um, and we haven't quite learned how to live in the cities yet. We'll talk well, a little well bit about said. that. Well said. So uh, that's part of our research at the Institute is, um, okay. you know, so in, 1800 only three percent of the world's population lives in the cities and most people have never even seen one right so if you're living in a village all the social and um, environmental mm -hmm. if you want to call them mm -hmm. that issues are right in front of you exactly you know where everybody lives exactly. you know what right. everyone does right. and you know people don't go hungry unless everybody's going hungry and exactly. Uh, exactly. the um, uh, and you don't uh, create a huge amount of waste because yes. you're the one who has to take care of it and you don't use up your resources because you're looking at them right there. <laughs> right, right? Right. So we're we're evolved as a you know species as an animal to, mm -hmm. to function that way. Right. But now 50% of the world's population lives in cities right. and and controls the other 50% of the world's population. Right. That doesn't live in the cities. That doesn't live right. in the cities. Um, and we don't see the effects of what we're doing in front of us anymore. Right. And we haven't learned how to adapt to that. Mm. So when you're living in a city, people behave like uh, you're in the middle of an empire. Hmm. And they've just, research has just dis finally discovered why empires collapse. <laughs> and they could never figure out, because they always collapse at their height. Right, they couldn't right. figure that out. Well, it's because they get most efficient at using stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> And Isn't that crazy? they run out of something. Right. It's very simple. It's simple mathematics. Yeah. yeah. And then they collapse, and because they can't support the population, they run out of health. They run out of the right kind of food. They run out of water, something like that. So, uh, wow. Now we're faced with how to um, address that, and we've mm -hmm. been doing that with our urban planning classes. In fact, okay. an integrated curriculum, all of our classes, uh, ranger, naturalist, uh, agroecology, Excellent. creek restoration, all of them are looking, right now we're looking at San Lorenzo Creek, mm. or San Leandro Creek, mm -hmm. which is open all the way from Martin Luther King shoreline to Lake Chabot. Really? And it's just has about, fences yeah. all along it. But we were trying to make a greenway and it, using all these sustainable principles. Mm -hmm. And we've begun in the East Oakland, um, uh, uh, Sobrani Park Excellent. area, Excellent. and our our classes host meetings, and oh, and we do, tr and then we train. We work with the city. We had a GreenWorks development program where we had high school kids mm -hmm. working with us, and they're paid and getting credit oh, at merit. So we're doing what we're calling uh, revillaging. Excellent. The city like is the trying word. to make like the uh, everybody, because what we've discovered is if everybody can really understand what they want their neighborhood to look like, hmm. and because if you ask any group, they'll come up with the most sophisticated, exactly. sustainable urban plan. Exactly. Then you ask, okay, how do you implement that? And no one, no knows. one knows. And then we've researched it right up through talking with the mayors and, and uh, congress people. Mm -hmm. They don't either. 
<laughs> <laughs> that's not surprising. Right. right. So uh, that's an area, a big, rich area to yes. invent. Yes. Of course, it's yes. a gap. So being ahead of your time means that you're ahead of the money as well. <laughs> that's true. Great job. Well, you have been getting an education on sustainability, not only from uh, our first guest, Jack, but now Robin. That's a great, great way to put it. If you don't uh, get yourself together and stop consuming, you will probably have nothing else to consume, and that's why it matters to you at Peralta. We'll be right back in a few minutes. Thanks again, Robin, for coming on the show. It's okay. a great job. You're welcome. Welcome back to Peralta Matters. I am your host, Jay Calhoun. We are still talking sustainability and how it matters to all things Peralta. My next guest is Laney Green Job Corps student, Jasmine Shepard. How are you, Jasmine? I'm doing all right, and you? Great, great. Let's talk first about the Laney Green Jobs Program and what it means. Okay, so the part of the Green Jobs Program I'm in is Intro to Energy Efficient Retrofitting. Okay. It's a 10-week, very intensive, <laughs> four-day-a-week course that okay. kind of gives you the basics of retrofitting to gotcha. make your house more energy efficient. And we have a whole bunch of different people in our group, so you can like pursue that on to get an associate's degree, mm -hmm. like in environmental controls. Mm -hmm. Or if you have work experience or you have prior education, then you can take those 10 weeks and try and get a job. Mm. We talked a little bit off camera and you already have a degree. I you, do. You uh, got your degree in engineering. I did. Why are you back in school? <laughs> oh, I asked myself that question <laughs> earlier this year, but honestly the recession is really tough mm. and there are lots of engineers in this country mm -hmm. and especially here in the Bay Area. Right on. And I wanted to make sure I was a little more competitive by knowing engineering school teaches you the old way. Right. I wanted to learn the new way of doing things. That's a great way to put it. Explain to me a little bit about the goals that you want to gain or the, the goals you want to achieve and the things you want to gain from the Lady Green Jobs Program. Well, what I wanted to learn was a little bit more about how you make an existing house more energy efficient because okay. mainly I knew about new construction before. Mm -hmm. So like the things like weather stripping, putting in new right, doors, right. Um, how much power switching to mm -hmm. the new uh, compact fluorescents can save, mm -hmm. all those okay. kind of things. Okay. And to try and get um, a building a BPI certification, which is like in retrofitting that gotcha. Laney offers, you know, for the courses and so. Okay. So is it is it specifically for you job oriented versus a uh, degree or a specific field? I mean, considering you've already done the engineering. Yeah, I would think that I'm not really trying to get a specific degree, but I'm just trying to take some classes to augment my existing degree. Right. Let's let's discuss a little bit about your collegiate experience. Um, uh, you went to school down south, uh, yes. originally from Georgia. I am. Uh, um, Explain or talk a little bit about the difference. Um, your experience, I'm sure, not only in the engineering program, but now in a green jobs program, which is a little bit more new, as you say, or fitted for a new direction. Talk about the differences. Well, it's just been very different going from a four-year school to kind of Laney. Mm -hmm. um, it has been, it has been, it's just a different environment. The homework is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You don't write papers and stuff that are like, go check your water heater and write down the nameplate and calculate this. Right. You know, right. when I was in, at Georgia Southern, it was like, I'm giving you this formula that's gonna take you two days to solve a problem. And the Green Jobs Program is more hands-on, mm. which I like. It's not as much theory, like you right. actually go out and do stuff. Right. But at the same time, I've, 
I've learned that, you know, I have a decent amount of common sense, good <laughs> amount of book smarts, right. but I should never build a house with my own two hands. Oh, okay. You're learning that, are you? <laughs> I am learning that. <laughs> I'm awful in carpentry class. Oh, I know standard. all, I know the theory behind it, but right. when I like get the hammer in my hand, <laughs> it's anybody's guess where it's going. With um, your engineering background, um, are you finding similarities, nuances, things that you found to be, as you said earlier, old practice compared to the new way to do things? Well, it's really interesting because when I was in college and I had to intern, mm -hmm. I worked at a coal mining internship mm -hmm. for a little bit, and I also worked for a paper plant mm -hmm. that was a coal-powered paper right. plant. So. It's just been like a whole different thing, like learning about all the harmful hmm. things that coal can do for you. Right. But at the same time, I will say like a lot of the math was like, you know, very easy right. because I knew all these like basic things right. and units and measures. So that that definitely and green building is about solving a problem. Hmm. Engineering is about solving problems. So. It's kind of the same thing with a new twist, hmm. so I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Break down a little bit again for us. We talked about it off camera. The process to get your AA at Laney in the Green Jobs Program. Okay, so for the people in our group, we took a 10-week class, which mm -hmm. is over the basics. And then from there, you can get your associate's degree in environmental controls mm -hmm. or in carpentry. Okay. And that's basically like it's the new version of HVAC, air conditioning and heating, all that stuff. Okay. But they have more specific classes for green building, like gotcha. they have the sustainable built environment, mm -hmm. they have classes on photovoltaics, mm -hmm. they teach about insulating the pipes mm -hmm. for water heaters okay. and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So there are classes that you can take to make your A degree a lot more green. <laughs> I like that, a lot more green. Now that you are in the job program and now that you are I'm sure almost done <laughs> of this intensive uh, 10 week program what do you think is the the core or the 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 remaining the, the sticking point for you of the program that you would pass on to the next student coming in I think that working hard is very important not to make mm. assumptions because I made that mistake in the beginning. Right on, okay. I definitely, you know, we have a large variety of people in our group. We got people who have been to college, people mm -hmm. who just got their GED the week before the class started, hey, okay. people who um, been working in construction. And you know, you think, oh, I'm gonna know this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna know, you have to like start from step one. Right on, don't okay. Stop at step, don't start at step three. Yeah. And you'll, you'll do, you'll do great. Excellent, well, congratulations on your journey and I hope for you continued success. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Jasmine, for being on the show. You have been watching Peralta Matters, where we were discussing sustainability and how it matters to all things Peralta. Again, I encourage you to watch our show, and until then, do something that matters. Peralta TV, programs that matter. Peralta TV.